Hi, it's Robin. Karsten Levat asks, can you show some examples of how to use the REU in Commodore 128 mode? Talked about the REU before, but for anybody not familiar, it's these jumbo cartridges here. This is the 1700, the 1764, and the 1750. They're all nearly the same. The 1764 was intended for the Commodore 64, and it has 256K of expansion RAM, while the 1700 and 1750 are intended for the Commodore 128. The 1700 only has 128K, while the 1750 has 512K. But in practice, I found all three work fine with either the Commodore 64 or the 128. I've read that there is a resistor that's a little different between the 128 models and the 64, and it can potentially cause some timing issues. I've never experienced those, but I should put that out there. The other major factor is that the REUs draw a lot of power. The stock Commodore 128 power supply can handle any of these, but the Commodore 64 power supply is already notoriously underpowered, and this will put a dangerous strain on that power supply. So if you're going to use any of these with a Commodore 64, you should have a heavy-duty power supply. In fact, the 1764 shipped with one. I've actually got one here, this big brick. Boy, oh, I should have cleaned that. You can see on the bottom there, it says Commodore 64, 1764, power supply. And this replaces the stock 64 power supply. And this is actually what I use whenever I'm recording my Commodore 64. And this little guy here is a 1750, a CMD 1750, which is a 512k REU that CMD made in, what is that, 90, 1997. So these are completely equivalent but the 1750 uses a lot less power, and generally I use this newer one, but I think they're even more rare. CMD also made a two megabyte version that I never did get when I had the chance. So I'll plug this into the Commodore 128. A common misconception about the REU is that it adds extra RAM directly to your Commodore system. Well, of course, it is expansion RAM, but the CPU cannot access it directly, not even with the bank switching that is built into the Commodore 128. Now, programming the REU is exactly the same on the C64 and the 128 when you're using assembly language, and I've showed that in other videos, so I'll put a link in the description to my overly thorough video about that. But what the Commodore 128 does offer is extra basic commands. And if you've got the Commodore 128 system guide, on page 259 is the fetch command, and on page 300 are the stash and swap commands. And all three use exactly the same syntax. In fact, they don't even bother to spell it out. They just keep telling you refer to the fetch command for the description of the parameters. Okay, so we'll look at that. So these commands are named very appropriately to reflect the idea that the CPU cannot access the REU directly. Instead, you stash or fetch memory from the RAM expander. And there's also a command that lets you swap, which will simultaneously stash and fetch. It's a good name, swap. So there's just four parameters. You go fetch. I don't know why they put that number sign there. You don't actually type the number in, the number of bytes, but I don't know, I find that inconsistent anyway. Fetch, the number of bytes from one through six, five, five, three, six. That's 64K exactly, which is the size of a bank in the REU. So the smallest REU has two banks of 64K for a total of 128K. And the largest Commodore-made REU has 512K, that is eight banks of 64K. Okay, and the second parameter is this int SA which is the starting address 
of the host RAM of the C128, and then XB equals the 64K RAM expansion bank. Now it says number 0 to 3, but really that should support at least 0 to 7. In fact, it does. It doesn't give you an error until you hit 16. I gave that a test. And finally, EXPSA, that is the starting address of the expansion RAM. And again, that's a 64K address. So you're basically telling it where in Commodore 128 memory the transfer is and where in REU memory. So these combine between the bank here, essentially giving it a greater than 16-bit address. Theoretically 24-bit, but really it gets limited to usually about, I think, 19 bits is really the maximum address. One other thing to note that got me, so the last two parameters are EXPSA and EXPB, but they are listed in the reverse order in this list. So this is actually correct at the top here that the bank comes after the expansion address. Okay, so let's give it a try. So if we do the little classic 10 print program, and let it fill up the screen, at least mostly. Yeah, that's good enough. Okay, and then let's stash 1000 bytes. We're just gonna stash screen memory into the REU. So 1000 bytes and screen memory on the C128 defaults to 1024, just like the Commodore 64, 0400 hex. And we can just put that anywhere we want, like at address zero in bank zero. So let's just stash that, clear the screen, and let's fetch that back. So we're just gonna pull it right back from memory. So again, we're gonna pull a thousand bytes and we wanna put it again in screen memory at 1024 and address zero, zero, again, at address zero in bank zero. And let's see how quick. How about that? <laughs> so it just basically instantly pulls it back. Stash and fetch are done at a full byte per machine cycle, which means that it can move a full megabyte in a second if, if it was doing a continuous transfer. Of course, none of these even have a megabyte, but that still is the transfer speed up to 64K at a time. Actually, let's try changing that to a swap command. That way we should be able to run the same command twice in a row and it will send it and bring it back. Let's choose another part of memory. We're going to use bank one instead. Okay, so there, we got some uninitialized RAM from bank one. And let's just try that again, swap. 1,000 bytes, screen memory, zero, and bank one, and see what happens. Okay, there we go. Oops, syntax error because it tried to execute that garbage at the end of the line. Let's try that again. Swap. And I will remark the rest of that garbage out. There. <laughs> Let me erase that syntax error. There. <laughs> That's a very ugly example, but I hope you get the idea that you can swap back and forth, you can store, you can fetch, or stash and fetch. And really, it is very powerful. So with this command, you have basically instant transfers available even to your basic program. You can even use it to, for example, scroll the screen. So let's try doing this again. Stash 1000 bytes. And then we're going to fetch it. Let's just pull back 960 bytes. And instead of at 1024, we're going to add 40 
because that's the screen length. I'm, I'm, I want to scroll, scroll the screen down. So I'm going to send it to the RU and then pull it back in a slightly different position. That should stash the screen to RU and then pull it back, but starting at the second line. So most of the screen should shift down. Let's see if it works. Yep, there we go. And the only thing that didn't was the top of the screen here. You would supply your own routine. Like say you had a big map stashed in memory that you could pull bits of it back and then you would just have to update this top line with something new. In fact, I guess if you had such a, a full map in memory, you could pull back a full thousand bytes from it in a, from a different position. You would just change this parameter here to a larger number, for example. I hope that was helpful, Karsten. Thanks for the question.